What's up, Maniacs? This is The Kibitz. I'm Dan. I'm here with my friends Jordan. Hello. And Christian. Hey. And today we are giving you first impressions of the NFL 5 trading card game from Panini Games. So, um, this is a trading card game. It is, uh, as of, you know, the recording this, it is actually, I think, unreleased yet, but coming out very soon, coinciding with the 2019 football season um, in America here. American football is what this is all about. <laughs> Um, and what we're doing, so we, we played a few games of this. We've cracked open a couple boxes. We got a box opening video. It either was posted before this or is coming soon. I'm not really sure what order it's coming in, uh, but you'll be able to check that out here as well. And we just kind of want to give you guys our initial thoughts after playing. Um, I demoed this at Gen Con and then we played the games here. So um, Jordan, I'm going to start off with you. Give me, yep, you have the honor. Let me know oh boy. what you think of NFL 5. All right, well, full disclosure, I'm not terribly into football. I do know some of the rules and, for the most part, like could fumble my way through a game. Nope. So fumbled. Ah! <laughs> so I do have some experience with how regular football is played. And yeah. from my novice level knowledge of football, I felt like it was a pretty all right comparison to football. Obviously, it wasn't exact. They had to change some things because it's a card game rather than a full, like, couple hour game every game is an abstraction of some kind yeah and you have like five players as opposed to the whole roster that teams normally have but i felt overall the feel of each play felt like the excitement of watching a game for example you yeah. weren't sure what was going to happen there was you know a fair bit of randomness but it was controlled randomness because you get to choose from your cards but you don't know half of the equation because of the way the game works the card you play and the card your opponent plays has an effect on how the play goes so you have some control over it, but you never quite know what your opponent's going to throw out. And I, I like that because it creates those sweet Hail Mary moments. Like, I played a game against Dan here where the opening play was a Hail Mary long pass for, like, 70 yards. And he wasn't seeing it coming. And yep. for the rest of the game, every time the play would restart, he'd start with long Start passes. with a long defense. <laughs> He's like, I gotta stop it. I can't let this happen again. And, so. and it didn't work. He outplayed me every time. <laughs> so, that was too bad. Man, um, those would be the opening thoughts I have on the game as a whole. Yeah, I I agree, um, especially with, I think that, um, now, I agree, it's not a perfect abstraction of football, but football is, I mean, and this is coming from my, my perspective also as someone who doesn't know football very well, football is, like, actually a complicated game. Like, there's a lot of rules and a lot of jargon and a lot of things I don't understand about the game still, uh, but honestly, after playing the game, I, like have a much better understanding of how the game, how, how at least the rule structure of the game works and everything. Um, not this game, this game as well, but football itself. Um, so I feel like the fact that I can come out with that bigger understanding of the game um, has to mean that to some degree it's doing something right in the way that it sort of abstracts the game, even if it's not going to be exactly perfect. Now, Christian is the bigger football fan. Yeah, I mean, I uh, my dad was a football coach, and I played six years of football in school, and so sure. I definitely know the rules. So you did know the rules, right? Uh, yep, I uh, mean, uh, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> I am, I'm a pretty big college fan, and definitely a little bit of an NFL fan as well. So yeah, uh, I mean, I definitely have a lot more of that experience, and uh, you know, uh, it's an interesting hybrid. You know, it's coming from a, a sports card game uh, company that is, uh, you know, trying to hybridize the uh, the sports cards collecting aspect with a game so you know you definitely got kind of a feel of football you can definitely see where there is you know like the the parallels of a lot of stuff but they're also trying to you know make a game of it so that it's interesting to play yeah um, so you know there's a little bit of mix in there of you know like the difference uh, oh, and, oh we got our, we got... our uh, star again here milk yes the uh, famous cat. the famous milk <laughs> I was gently letting uh, her off the table yeah. there. Milk also good for strong bones when you're playing football. Anyway, hey, uh, <laughs> nice working that in. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's, it's an intriguing concept, uh, you know, of trying to uh, you know like take uh, two passions and, and meld them together. That seems to uh, you know kind of come together in, in in an interesting way. So definitely, yeah, yeah. I will say that. Um, so we these starter decks. We opened up four of them. And we we played the different starter decks there. If you're out. Uh, just to buy some starter decks and try it out, what you're going to find is that there are, so there's one of six random decks in here, but what that means is that each deck has the same action and play cards in it. There's the same set of 20 of each of those, um, and then it has different sets of offensive and defensive players. Yep. Um, 
So it does mean that if you're playing these starter games, you and your opponent can expect to have access to kind of the same sets of cards, the same kind of plays, the same actions that you're doing, but your uh, your players themselves are going to yeah. be different. You'll each have a, a five-man offensive team and a five-man defensive team, and those will be unique to each one there. So I think there's th the six combinations. Yep. I think that's a good and a bad thing. Um, I, I like that I can open this up and I can tell you kind of roughly how it's going to play it because you have those same plays and actions um and it means when you buy some booster packs of the game um i was trying to point to them but we opened them already so there <laughs> when you buy oh here we go booster packs of the game you're going to crack open some different plays and action cards and that's when you get to start tweaking your deck to be like focused more specifically on certain types of like passes, uh, passes or, or runs. certain runs or or defensively oriented towards stopping different kinds of things and i think um the game opens up a ton when you add that stuff in. If you're just playing out of the starter decks, you know, you're going to have fun, you're going to get the experience of the game, but it's going to be really locked into that uh, the decks are made with just kind of even balances of plays, passes, or uh, yeah, passes, a, runs, actions. Yeah, a nice mix of a little bit of everything and just to give you a feel of how it all works, whereas opposed to once you get those packs and start focusing, you'll be able to make like a more laser-focused right. kind of team and deck that and you're that's, trying to build, too. Yeah. That's where your TCG knowledge and experience is going to kick in, and you're going to be able to start to craft like those kind of killer combos in those decks. You know, because I, I, I wonder how it works if you just have a deck that's like, all I'm doing is long passing. All That's oh. the only thing I'm going to do, and everything's oriented to making my long passes succeed. That how do you... Long pass well, all the way. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you go up against an opponent, and if they don't have long pass defense in their deck... Like, mm -hmm. they just have to, like, blitz you back, right? And yeah. try and, like, win the game that way mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. hope that they can, like, screw up your long passes and make them fail. And I think there's an interesting metagame that yeah. can develop there from that, but you don't really see that in the starter decks. Definitely. Um, but I think, you know, for better or worse, they're, these are a good entry point just to try the game out and to, and to learn how that works. And then um, you'll see if you watch our box opening video, but you'll see there's uh, a pretty wide variety of other types of effects that you'll get at all rarities. That you'll be able then to mix in and start to tweak your deck. You know, there's no requirement to use all of characters of the same team or anything. All character, all players of the same team. Although there are cards that benefit from having all characters of the same team on yeah. your team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. <laughs> players, players that get we're used to so many other card games. Uh -huh. um, but I, so I think there's. It's nice though that that you don't have to do that because then you can really open up your options to building specifically towards combinations of effects that you want to see. Or you can build your favorite team. Mm -hmm. You know, either option's available to you. Um, what do you guys think of the rarity scheme in the boxes? We, we opened a couple of these now. So we got epics, legendaries, and rookies, and rares that are available. You get one rare guaranteed in every pack. And every box looks like it has, on average, um, it has somewhere... It looks like maybe the average ratio is like four or five epics one or two legendaries maybe two rookies but like we don't have a lot of data to like really say exactly what that is and sometimes they're foil sometimes they're not um you get mostly non-foils especially the epics yeah um how do you guys feel about that scheme compared to like other card games um the one thing that i took note from it that i really like a lot is the fact that you're above rare there's a special slot specifically for those cards. So when you do get it, you're not losing out on a rare or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, you get 24 you, rares for sure. Yep, mm -hmm. you'll be guaranteed your, the 24 rares. Box. Plus the addition of, you know, legendaries, rookies, sometimes more than one of those rarities. So mm -hmm. it, it adds both to the excitement of opening packs. And I feel like you get pretty good value out of it as well. Yeah, and with the foil and non-foil of every rarity, you also then can get the, the double rare pack with the foil rare and the regular rare. Yep. Uh, yep. And so, yeah, there's a, a lot of option there. Um, and that, you know, like having the higher-end cards not automatically be foiled adds another layer of collection. Yeah. Um, so if that yep. is what you're focused on, you know, it gives you that extra layer of chase that you want. So. Yep, and it just it's just like it feels so good to open the box and just get those, like when you see a foil legendary, like we did in one of our boxes, that was like an exciting moment. Like, oh, yeah. wow, I mean, this is awesome that you can actually get this. And we got it alongside a non-foil legendary. So you can have these hot boxes where you're getting like really sweet pulls. And I think people who are into football trading cards are going to like being able to go into this and open boxes and get a bunch of cool like chase, especially because the players at, at the higher rarities are all, as far as I understand, they're all good players. They're all well-known, yeah. um, popular, impressive yeah, they all, they all have some fairly fairly good effects, uh, whether or not they're just really consistent. 
uh, but powerful effects are, are some more explosive effects, and they're all they're all good uh, players that all football fans are going to know. So yeah, so I I think that's I think that's pretty well done, honestly. And like I'm saying this as someone who was critical of some of Panini's previous games uh, and their rarity schemes, especially like the original the the 2014 Dragon Ball Z launched with this like one every three boxes ultra rare nonsense Maybe, like kinda. yeah well you know what i can tell you that i believe panini has learned as they've gone on with these trading card yeah. games too and they're and we're seeing now opening this box just getting a smattering of rare cards and value it feels like in both boxes we opened i felt like i walked away with a steal you know yeah. i felt like if i went and purchased this box i would not feel disappointed at all that definitely feels a lot more generous than the previous games because having also played it where you know the best pull rate generally like you said is like one every other box for ultra rares and stuff in this game there is more rarity tiers which at first had me like uh that seems and rough but you get so many of them in a box right it counteracts the fact that there's multiple tiers because you're getting there's more know, cards at each rarity one. too there's like yep, yep. there's like 20 different epics or something and another nice thing is that you don't have to collect a lot to have a set because each character is unique yeah that's a great know, point. Think and, about and that. Each, you only need each one copy. action. You can have two of. So yep. I mean, you, so even at really? worst, you need two. Of, I didn't know that. At yeah. worst, you need two of for your set. There um, is an epic. So. There's an epic called uh, out outperform. I think. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's, that's the called. one. It yeah. lets you adjust a play strength by up to three. Yeah, that's a powerful. That's going to be probably. I think a, that's like a staple staple card. Everything if you can. So if you open up a box, you get outperform foil. You. You hang on to that thing, or you ship it on eBay for like yeah. a bunch of money or yeah, something. Because that's, slam, a, that's a that's yeah, a that's a hot card for sure. You spike that one. That makes but me feel <laughs> like you get terms. not not that specific card, but no. the just knowing the play sets now. And f I totally forgot that you only need you know one copy of each character. I feel like that makes the value even better in these booster boxes because you got you know more consistently you got more things in the epic and legendaries and rookies, yeah. but. Most of those cards, you only have to hit once. Like right. once you got them, you're ready to go. You like got you, it. you have a playset. So yeah, I can I can say that like playing the starter decks, I got a good feel for the game. Opening the boxes, I started to actually like get some excitement. Yeah, for, definitely like, built the hype. As someone who wasn't yeah. a football fan, you know, I went in, I thought, you know, this is a pretty fun game. I like this. I opened those booster boxes, and then I thought, I was my mind was churning. I was reading the cards, thinking, man, it'd be cool to have a deck that like did this kind of thing, or like did all long passes. What what happens then when you do that? So. Um, I think, I think for football fans and for TCG fans, there is a lot to enjoy here, um, and and a lot to explore. And uh, and you know, with you and a buddy, you can just sit down and, and crack open some of this stuff. And you could even just like out of a single box because those characters are just like one per deck. I think you can really come up with a lot of game out of mm -hmm. just that one box and maybe a couple starters to get you the the basics. It was also really enlightening to having done the box opening, especially prior to us filming this, because with just the starter decks, I was feeling like a lot of the character cards and some of the effects on cards seemed too samey, but having seen the booster packs and not just the starter deck, which, granted, it's a starter deck, I should expect them yeah. all to be kind of similar. They have to be basic and, yeah, and similar. Yeah, so people can get into the game, but after seeing some of the other really cool different effects you can do, I'm a lot more excited about the game as a whole. Great. Uh, did we want to delve into just showing off some of the art real quick, uh, or did we uh, I think, save that for I a think, bit later? I uh, think, as far as artwork and stuff, you check out our box opening video, because we do a close-up of, like, yeah. every yeah. single card, so whether or not I've released that already or not, um, we'll It'll see. It'll be coming if it's it not will be out coming already. If not, yeah. Uh, yeah, for the collectors, just a note that the cards do look sweet, the pictures are like, nice and big, and for the gamers, the all the text is still very legible it's, it's a really yeah. nice layout so. it's a good yes. it's a good hybrid game um i think they i think they had a goal of, of kind of making that hybrid and i think if there's one thing they achieved it's it's that it's that yeah, they the actually aesthetic is great. Yeah. made a really good aesthetic that appeals to both sets of people a good rarity scheme that i think should appeal to both gamers and collectors really well the foiling um, looks real nice too yeah. yeah yeah the foils look good so i mean i think i think if they play their cards right there's a hit on their hands you know i think this could definitely pan out with the right people who are looking for it so if you're interested in nfl 5 um it should be available in all normal distribution channels for hobby stores uh, comic shops game shops and sports card shops so go ahead and ask your friendly local store get it in or check online you find some variety of online sellers that'll have it too um but that's going to be all for today's uh, inaugural the kibitz hope you guys have enjoyed kibitzing with us here today 
and uh, check out NFL 5. Thanks again to Panini Games for shipping us this. Sorry, you had something to add there, Christian? I was just going to note, uh, just on the rule book thing, uh, oh. just because it's going to definitely be apparent <laughs> to people when you're reading through yes. it. Yes. Um, so, That's a fair point. Yeah, uh, there are the one caveat uh, is that, uh, and some of it's more nitpicky than others, but there's definitely a couple couple hiccups in the rule book. Um, but Panini is going to be, uh, I'm assuming, yeah, like, they'll be putting out uh, like a PDF, like an update, uh, and then there's the Facebook page where you can definitely go and ask questions. Yeah. Um. So I mean, uh, you know, there's like a, just like I said, a couple minor hiccups. You know, like uh, definitely, uh, I think there's going to be plenty of online resources to like help smooth that out for you. So. Check out PaniniGames.com. That's the official blog for Panini Games, and there they'll have tournament documents which will include any currently up-to-date FAQs or current rulings documents for the game and those can always help you answer questions otherwise we have an NFL 5 fan T TCG fan community on Facebook you can join and there's a discord server as well lots of options to join the community and uh, make sure you check this game out if you're interested otherwise uh, that is it for today's episode and we'll see you guys in the next one take care